Welcome, welcome to the Rick Helps Real Estate Show. Tonight's weekly recap of things that we saw in the Arizona real estate market and a few things nationally. It's kind of an interesting week. We thought it was going to be possibly a snoozer or it could be volatile. But the first thing that we noticed when we looked at the rates was that we had Fed Day right in the middle here. Let me roll this up just a hair so you can see it better. And on Fed Day, rates went down. They usually go down whenever they talk. They said that they weren't going to raise rates. And, of course, we saw that coming. So did the bond traders. So they went down. Then they kind of kind of came back up. Then the jobs report came out. And rates dropped yet again. Why is that? Well, the job report showed that we weren't putting on as many jobs as people anticipated. That's not inflationary. Therefore, the, the, the Treasury is not Treasury. I can't even talk today. Chairman Powell is not going to raise rates. And uh, so that was good news for the bond market, the way they went. And then there was some other news first at the beginning of the week. Last week's PC&E inflation data was worse than we thought. So we ended up starting out the week going up with rates, going up again, and then gradually coming down, landing at about 7.29 right now today on, a, on the average. Now, what did it do to our market? Well, not a lot. Our average listings or the number of listings that we have is has flatlined. It's not growing. I've been hearing people saying that, oh, listings are climbing up. Well, they're not. Um, new listings have started to go up just a hair, uh, but they're still being purchased at a at enough of a rate to where it's not adding to our total inventory. But here's where we are today. We're saying there were 7,248 closed transactions, up 6% from April in 2023. Now that sounds very encouraging, but when we look at these numbers, um, we had 10% more working days this April than we did last April. So when you look at percentage of gains, that makes a difference. Hey there, Rick here. If you're thinking about moving to the Phoenix area or any of the surrounding communities, be sure and hit that subscribe button below so that you can be the first to know about the current market conditions. If you're thinking about moving in nine days or nine months, Jessica and I would be happy to help you understand the Valley of the Sun. All of our contact information is in the information below. And if you have any questions, be sure and reach out. Closing counts looked a bit stronger. So they're looking here and saying the overall median sales price is up 4.7 from last year. The resale median sales price was up 6.9. And this has been a surprise to a lot of people. People have been waiting for prices to come down. And unless you're really on top of the market, uh, you don't know that prices have continued to go up and up. What is interesting that we also saw this week was uh, a recap of what's going on with price changes though, price reductions. And they are climbing, especially Above 3 million. Take a look at this. This is homes above 3 million that reduced their price. 184 homes. Over 3 million saw a price pullback over the past four weeks. So what's going on in that market? Um, hard to tell. We're going to have to see what happens. But we have hit an affordability wall. And we talked on our Friday show with uh, Jason Maggard up in the Pacific Northwest. And he was showing us how their numbers in the Northwest are really starting to show people, quite frankly, just giving up. They can't get into the housing market. They're done. Uh, the average payment up there is like four grand. That's why when I'm looking at some of these programs that come out there to help with down payment assistance, the problem with the housing market for us is not the down payment. You can give me $20,000, $30,000 to get in the house. If I can't afford the payment, I can't afford the payment. And they're seeing that up in Seattle. And so their numbers are drastically different than what we're seeing. But we are seeing our affordability is a problem here. The average price for our houses here, 438000 And you need an average income of $123,316 to be able to afford that house with a 20% down payment. Now, if this continues to escalate like it's going, we are going to start seeing an affordability problem. When? I don't know. I think we're running probably about a year behind the Pacific Northwest. Now, if wages change and things pick up, all bets are off the board. But for, for here right now, we're seeing uh, the beginnings of some problems, but we're seeing a lot of job growth still. And then there's some surprising news out there. Look at here. Here's a Tempe condo project, not Tempe, North Scottsdale condo complex 
sells out. It's not even done yet, and it's sold out, and it's up on Scottsdale Road in the 101. You've probably seen it if you've driven by it. And it's called Portico, 112-unit luxury condominium community at the Loop 101 in Scottsdale Road. It is now fully sold out. How much are they, you ask? Well, sitting down, they're from $600,000 to $2 million. The market is still brisk in some price points for Arizona, especially in the Scottsdale area, and we're starting to see that. So um, it ain't dead out there yet. Now, on my Friday live show, I talked about a meme that's out there that real estate agents are putting out there and some some lenders uh, comparing today to 1971. And if you waited for interest rates to go down, you would have missed out on a, some appreciation and trying to compare today to back in the 70s. And that's not something I agree with. And I highlighted it in our conversation on this clip here. You know, I keep seeing this repeated Facebook post that's out there because Facebook is where you go uh, uh, to get accurate information, as I'm sure you know. <laughs> and then the rest, of course, is uh, TikTok. Um, yep. I mean, I know if, if I want to get serious data, um, I scroll through my phone on TikTok. I don't have TikTok. So... This one's out there. This one's everywhere. So I'm not, uh, um, um, you just missed me on Chandler. I'll show you again in just a moment here, Neelam. Um, in 1978, 78, the interest, 71, the interest rate for mortgages was 7.33. If you waited for rates to go down, you would have purchased a home, wouldn't have purchased a home until 1993. You would have rented for 22 years waiting for rates to go down. Meanwhile, the value of real estate quadrupled. Don't buy real estate. Don't wait to buy real estate. Buy real estate and wait. Are you ready for it? Marry the house, date the rate. <laughs> okay, well, back then, I'll bet you the United States didn't look like this. Also, we talked about, too, that I showed a chart that, along with the comments out there, people saying, well, you know, the central bank's going to lower interest rates because this is an election year. And I shared a chart on the, on the show. This is on Friday night show, showing that historically, they haven't had any impact at all. They haven't. They've. They're just as equal in raising rates as they are in lowering rates before an election. In fact, uh, um, Chairman Powell alluded to that this week on his press conference, where he goes, "We don't give that an ounce of consideration." And if you don't believe me, go back and read our Fed minutes. There's no mention anywhere in the Fed minutes of an election. So for those of you that are hanging on to the hat that well, they're going to lower rates so they can influence an election. Not only are they verbally telling you they don't even consider that, but there's no data out there that shows that they have in the past. So I encourage you to not hang your hat on that premise. Now, we've got some news coming out here in the West Valley where the Coyotes got the big boot. Glendale owns that stadium, and they are going to have the late. Here's the latest details on a $40 million desert diamond renovation project. They're saying that uh, construction and renovation, which is owned by the city of Glendale, is set to start in June. They're going to try and renovate this and not interrupt it with the uh, schedule that they have for concerts out there. He said, we schedule all of our events so that we can continue with the renovation and finish up in early 25 without shutting the building down. That's the biggest challenge. So the renovations come after Desert Diamond Arena, once the home of the Coyotes, at its best year in 2023. Last year, they hosted 50 events. So they're going to try and make it more concert friendly. And we'll see what happens. I haven't, uh, I've been to one hockey game out there uh, and one concert. So maybe I'm just kind of a boring, boring guy. But that's what's going on in the Arizona real estate market. If you have any questions, be sure and hit me up at rick at rickhelps.com. Thanks.